holding this event on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, whose land was stolen and everything connected to it, including their labor. So here we are tonight in Melbourne, launching a book about an historic event that happened in Seattle 40 years ago. This could seem irrelevant to us, except for a couple of critical things. One is that it was an almighty battle by women to enter a trade. It's a history written for us in the era of Me Too, Black Lives Matter, Change the Rules, and the Fight for the Right to Strike. It's written in the wake of neoliberalism and the buildup of fightbacks over the decimation of jobs. And what we see right here and now is women and people of color still leading these battles. Radical Women and the Freedom Socialist Party are hosting tonight's book launch. And it's so fitting that this launch is being held in the Electrical Trades Union, and we have the ETU Women's Committee and its generous support to thank for this. Uh, the Women's Committee was really excited uh, when we were approached to participate in the uh, High Voltage Women book launch. Uh, coming from a very similar industry, it was eye-opening and interesting to read what the female pioneers of this uh, industry went through back in the day. Uh, it's crazy to see that women from a completely different country, time period, and time period, uh, were encountering similar situations uh, to what we still find today on site in Australia, in Melbourne, in 2018. 19. 19. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, the book was a great overview into what was a significant political battle to get women and minority people into the trades, no matter who they were, where they came from, or what their situation was. And it's what we're striving for today as well. Um, a highly recommended read, from me personally and a few of the other girls that have read it. And uh, let's continue this forward progress and get more people into the trade and give equal opportunity to all. Thank you. Affirmative action was a demand coming out of the 1960s civil rights movement designed to redress historical discrimination. It's not reverse discrimination as its opponents claim, it's based on opening up places to applicants who are equally qualified, but shut out by discrimination. In the early 1970s, Seattle City Light Management was all white and male, as was its workforce, except for a few men of color who had been recently hired. The federal government mandated City Light to introduce affirmative action as a prerequisite to getting funding for its infrastructure projects. So the company hired Clara Fraser, well known as a community organizer, to design and run a training program for women. The 10 women selected from 300 applicants became the pioneering electrical trades trainees, or ETTs. They were a diverse group, multiracial, some were openly lesbian, some single mothers, and some were movement activists. Three were members of Radical Women and the Freedom Socialist Party. Clara herself was a socialist feminist leader and veteran of McCarthyism, and she helped found Radical Women and the Freedom Socialist Party. City Light Management was ambivalent about the program from the start. And I'll just draw your attention um, to this badge, um, which says, Radical Socialist Bitch. Now this actually has a story behind it, and you'll read about it in the book. The administration, as I said, um, all white, um, all male, uh, at the top level, did not see this coming. They had thought they would be able to kind of uh, uh, placate liberal Seattle with the program, not with the actual women. They hadn't really thought what it was going to be like when they actually had women on the work site. Within a year, management sacked Clara, cut the program, and fired the trainees. It took years of unrelenting organizing to win back the program and the positions. And the book shows you how they did it. 
I joined the Freedom Socialist Party in December 1982. And this was just one month after Clara Fraser returned to work as the Training and Education Coordinator at Seattle City Light after an absolutely <laughs> epic seven and a half year battle. This win was the talk of the town in Seattle and visiting that beautiful city, I absorbed the lessons of the struggle in this book like a sponge. Key amongst them were that to beat management, you don't get phased by a setback. And boy, like, is that a lesson that we need, you know, like right now, you regroup, you strategize, and you move on to the next stage of the struggle. A year later, after joining the party, I faced discrimination on the job as a teacher and was moved to a desk job because of my LGBTIQ liberation activism. I knew that while using legal mechanisms was a really useful tactic, that this was something that would not deliver on its own. The management at Northern Melbourne Institute of TAFE were also union busters. They were union busters and they went after radicals. And I got some really key messages from the story documented in High Voltage Women to help in that situation. And that is, take a stand, fight back, organise and defend the right to be radical. Some of the stories of hazing in high voltage women are quite shocking. It brings into sharp relief that combating sexual harassment is a crucial work health and safety issue. And it is definitely something that is union business. The ETTs, black, Latina, Asian American and white women who were young, mothers, lesbians and socialist feminists, all of these women stood up to harassment on the job. The primarily immigrant women strikers from the National Union of Workers followed in their footsteps. Supported by unionised male co-workers, they won real gains through collective strike action. Every victory is something to savour and then get ready to defend. Stories help us to understand something about real people in real time to understand ourselves. And there was one Asian woman, two black women, one Chicana that was mixed in terms of gender identification, uh, gay and straight. It was mixed in terms of economic class in the sense of all the women were poor at the time, but some had more education and opportunities than others. They were not all political activists. They were activists in the sense that they wanted the same kind of pay and the same kind of treatment on the work site as the men who had the jobs. I'm loving the learning. I'm 42. I'm in my first year um, as a linesman, and, and it's fantastic. I've always been um, inquisitive about power. Um, this big taboo, you know, don't touch the PowerPoints as you're growing up, and you just want to learn how they how they work and how things go together. But that's not why I started at the apprenticeship as a linesman. Um, I fell in love with the rail and the work the linesmen do on the rails. So. Yeah, the electric car. It's like you might not necessarily make friends on your first job site, but sometimes the people that you think are really boring and not your kind of people, if you actually talk to them a bit more, then you'll find common ground. I have to say, in conclusion, there's never been a more enjoyable way to learn than tearing through the pages of high voltage women. So um, be sure to get yourself a copy tonight. Thank you. Thank you.